All right. Hi, everyone. Hello. Good morning. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, Jen, thank you for that introduction. And actually, thank you for believing in me, right? Because I came into UIM back in 2018. <clears throat> I started off as a volunteer. Just a quick short story. Um, I was working the registration uh, table, and I just remember reaching out to Nikisha and Jen, and I watched the video of UIM, and it just left an impression, an impact on me, and I was like, I want to be a part of that conference. Like, i got to be there the next time. So I registered. Um, I was registering um, uh, the attendees coming in, and then a couple months later, uh, Jen asked me to join the board, and then uh, like a couple months, maybe a year later after that, uh, here I am standing um, or taking a, a role as a vice president and all the whole entire time I was never chasing a title I was just chasing you know God's God's purpose in my life like that's exactly what I was chasing I was just chasing what God had put in my life and um, and I'm, I'm blessed I'm blessed that you believed in me I'm blessed that I'm a part of UIM and its mission and its vision so I am thankful for you as well before I begin I also got to shout out my family um, because um, I have right there that's like I am incredibly blessed um, just to have a supportive and loving family so um, I have family that drove from uh, Maryland uh, flew in from Florida um, just to see me here um, on stage so thank you guys I love you guys my stepdad made it too I see you thank you um, so yeah give it up for my family as well um, so the title of my presentation is called hope in hardship when you are faced with hard, hard times where do you place your hope and as I was preparing this message and reflecting of what areas of my life I could possibly share with you to help you understand, you know, how I've been able to overcome all the hard moments in my personal life and how I've been able to get to where I am and stand confidently in front here and deliver a message. I asked God, I said, you know, God, what do I share? And I kept on praying about it. And he said, share me. Share me. Share where you placed your hope during hard times. Right? And I'm thinking, well, what specifically? Share how you almost lost your son when he was five years old due to kidney failure. But I was there. Or Liz, why don't you share how even a month later he was hospitalized again for another month and you felt defeated, but I was there. Or how, how about you share how you cried yourself to sleep as you battled depression silently, but yet I was there. Or share how you battled anxious thoughts. And again, you fought silently, but I was there. Or better yet, why don't you share how you battled thoughts and heard voices and contemplated suicide, not once, but twice. And Liz, I was still there. Or when you felt like a failure because you felt like your marriage was failing. But yet, Liz, I still am there. Or how about recently when I found out I, had a, I was having my long-awaited baby girl, right? So it's just six uh, years ago. I, I have three boys. And I found out I was having a little girl. And if you know me, you know that's, that's a big deal. <laughs> Only to find out that same day that she was going to need open heart surgery immediately after birth. Wow. But yet God was there. 
or just recently. Just three weeks ago, I was sick, I was discouraged. I didn't even think I was going to make it on this stage. I didn't even want to probably make it on this stage, quite honestly, the way I felt. And yet God was still there. Listen, there's been times that I was barely making it. Barely making it. And I know that there's probably times that you feel like you're barely making it. You might be sitting right here, barely making it. Mentally, emotionally, physically. Maybe you're even battling spiritually. But can I tell you something? Wherever you're struggling, God is already there. He's here. He is fully here. Not only did I struggle, right? But I am the, ki- the queen of putting a nice facade, right? So nobody knew. A lot of it was silently or alone. Just recently, I have a quick short story. I went to the dentist. Now, how many of you like going to the dentist? Yeah, me neither. So um, I, went to, I had to visit the dentist. Um, I had fractured a tooth, but I fractured the tooth um, in the back. So like you can't see it when I smile, um, but I had to get it fixed. So of course I go to the dentist after I hadn't been there for a a little bit. And um, because it had been a while, I've always struggled with my teeth. I mean, I'm probably putting myself on blast here. So, but anyway, um, I went to the dentist and I had to get all new x-rays, right? So um, I'm doing the whole dental evaluation and I'm getting, the eval done and in the middle of the evaluation the dentist stops right and and we're going through the treatment plan right so again I'm here thinking you're just gonna fix my tooth and I'm just gonna you know go Um, and he says Liz you know I I have to be you know quite frank with you Um, it's been a while so we're doing a whole new treatment plan and um, but you know I I hate to break it to you, but you have a pretty smile. Like you have, you smile. Your teeth look sturdy. They look good when you smile. Um, but they're they're falling apart on the inside. They're weak. They're sensitive. They're not strong enough. Um, so I'm gonna create this treatment plan for you but you're going to have to stay consistent and and follow through right like you have to comply um because if you don't you're going to lose what you have i mean you're getting older so and i'm looking and i'm thinking okay you know um and so i left there i had to pay 30 dollars for medicated toothpaste to strengthen the enamel of my teeth um, to start this process and as i'm driving home I'm listening to what he told me, right? Like, I'm listening to the words that he said. And he said, they look good on the outside, right? How many times do we look good on the outside? Mm -hmm. Our hair is done. Our makeup is right. We're dressed to the nines. But they're weak. We're weak on the inside. We're broken. We're sensitive. We're damaged. We're fractured. Right? Not only because throughout the years, but because of the daily grind. Because everything we had to endure and bottle up. Not only that, but we were never consistent. Consistent in what? Consistent in relying in the one who strengthens us, who reinforces us, who replenishes us, right? Who is that person? Who sustains us? And I said, wow, how relevant that is to my personal life. And I'm sure that's relevant to some of you too. So again, I left there paying a $30, $30 for a 0.2 ounce of a medicated toothpaste. And I don't know about you, but I can't afford $30 for a medicated toothpaste tube of toothpaste, let alone the bigger price attached to my soul or my mental health. 
No makeup is going to hide the brokenness that you feel inside. Just like no suit and tie is going to hide your flaws, your mistakes, your past. We can look good on the outside, but if we don't learn how to take care of ourselves on the inside, we will start falling apart. And we're going to face seasons of uncertainty, right? Seasons of hardship, seasons of difficulties, seasons where you're questioning God's plan for your life, who's in your life. Seasons where you're questioning yourself, your purpose, your goals. And as, as, as things begin to shift in our lives and the uncertainties begin to arise, because they will, if we're not careful, and if we're not consistent, and if we're not putting our trust in God, we will waver. We will fall apart. We will lose hope. And I don't want to continue wearing a mask. And I'm sure a lot of you don't either. I realized that not only do I need the strength of my creator to get through some hard times, but I also need the hope that comes from sharing my story. And you know what? Perhaps even listening to yours, right? Because individually, we all have a purpose, but collectively, we all have a goal, and that is to destroy whatever or overcome whatever comes to try to take us down or take us out. And that's what makes us unstoppable. Unity, love. Because let's remember what the word says, right? Because no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Because all things work together for our good, for those who are called according to his purpose, right? And greater is he that is in me than he who is in the world. And if God be for me, then who can be against me, right? Right? So when I ask God, God, what do I share? How do I share that I overcame adversity? He said, you didn't. I did. He said, you placed your trust and hope in me, and I took care of the rest. I took care of the rest. Because in this world, you will have trouble, right? But take heart. He has overcome the world. So I'll ask you again, where do you place your hope? Jeremiah 29, 11. He knows the plans he has for you to prosper, not harm you, to give you hope in the midst of hardship, and to give you a future. Where's your hope? That's it. Thank you. I love you. I love you too. I love you, Chico.